Hey everybody, welcome back. You made it here from the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower, we did our bottom five on Friday. Yep. This is the flip side. This is uh, our channel. And hey, we're doing our top five games from 2010. We're carrying it over. What do you think? Well, go check out the first. Actually, there was a lot of games in there that it would be fun to get back to the table. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Absolutely. Um, yeah. A lot of good games uh, in 2010. A lot of good games that uh, we probably haven't played in a long time. Mm. That would be one of the main reasons I would want to get them back to the table yeah. is just so that I could experience them again. It was still a very hard year for me to pick games, yeah. but but out of our lists, actually, I think that uh, there are several of those that I'd like to play. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, so as per usual... Bottom five was our numbers 10 through 6. This right here is our top five, which is our numbers 5 through 1. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, here we go. My number five is a game by Game Right Games. Or I think it might just be called Game Right. And uh, this is called Forbidden Island. I believe... If I'm not mistaken, this is their first in the Forbidden series. They also have Forbidden Desert, and I know they have Forbidden. They have Forbidden Skies. Four now, yeah. And, and then Forbidden they also Jungle. have Forbidden Jungle. Yeah. Forbidden Jungle is the newest one. I think I came haven't out played last that one. year. Yep. Neither have I. Neither have I. But this one kind of uh, was the uh, patriarch, if you want to put it mm -hmm. that way, or the matriarch, whichever you'd like to put it. And uh, this is the one that started it all. Let's put it that way. And yep. I have really enjoyed this game. Uh, over the years, and I still own it. That was one of the monikers for all but one of the games in my top five. Yeah, I still own them. I still own them. So uh, some of them in our in my bottom uh, five, I still own, but not as many. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted to make sure I did in the top five were things games that I owned. Um, so. Nice. I was able to do that with all but That's one, but but my number five here, I definitely own Forbidden Island. Still have it in the ten. Did you have yours in the ten? Yes. Yeah. You don't like the tens, though. Well, nobody likes the tens, but <laughs> I do. Nobody likes. I, I don't do. Like the I like tens. the tens. They're hard to store. Yeah, I, know. I know. They get dented up. I know, but I like the tens. There's one game in the ten that I got rid of that I wish I would have kept, but that's not a oh, 2010 boy. game. Not a 2010 game. Um, All right. Well, yeah. that's my number five, Forbidden Island. Basically, you're <clears throat> you're you're trying to get off the island before the island, I don't know, explodes or sinks into the sea or the volcano erupts or something mm. like that. I can't remember the exact theme, but before it uh, sinks into the sea, it's yeah, a cooperative sure. game where we're trying to work together to get off of the island. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. So that's my number five, Forbidden Island. Nice, good pick, um, and it's the best of the series, at least of the first three. Mm. Uh, in my opinion. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, my number five is a little simple game. You can probably buy it at most stores in, in the world still, maybe. Um, and that's called Zombie Dice. Oh. Zombie okay. Dice is a great game where you've got a bunch of dice in a, in a cup. You reach in, you grab three, you roll them. If they're shotguns, they go on one side, which I don't know. If they're shotguns, they go on one side. If they're feet, they go in the middle. And if they're brains, they go on the other side. Um, and then if you have feet left, you get to pick more dice out back to three. Um, and you're it's just you're pushing your luck, trying to get as many brains as you can. But if you get three shotguns before you stop, you, did. you get zero points. Yeah, you did. And then it goes to the next person. So, you know, you could lose two or three or four brains if you... If you're, you know, if you're pushing for, and you get that third shotgun, so. Oh wow. Um, it's just a fun little game. That's cool. Uh, has different colored dice in them, so you know mm -hmm. when you pick them out. Oh crap! This yellow one or this red one is much harder to get a brain on. There's meant much more shotguns on it. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just a push your luck. Roll dice some brains. Game. Whoever gets the yeah. most. I don't remember. There's a value. You need to get ten or something like that, um, to win. Mm -hmm. um, huh. That's it. Okay. So, it's a chill little game by still Steve Jackson. Yep, yep. I remember Zombie Dice. Yeah, and and you're probably right. I think I was just in, I was just in uh, Hooked on Toys a couple of days ago, and I I, I remember oh, yeah. seeing Zombie you can Dice. You see them all over the place. Yep, yep, yep. All right, um, cool. All right, that was my number five. Good pick. My number four is not going to be on JT's list because uh -huh. he has not played it yet. Oh. And okay. this is a good game. Fair. So we need to play oh, it. Oh, did we just talk about this? Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Alien Frontiers. Alien Frontiers. This is a great game. Great worker placement game. Great theme. All of that and a bag of chips. Uh, it's just a, a lot of fun. I can, at the very least, let you borrow it. I can't. Uh, I, I'd love to play it with you again, but, you know, schedules as they are, it's hard yeah, enough I to play, play games, period. Game. But I'll let you borrow it. I definitely got to play this game. So, um, yeah, I've just... It, it it gets a little it gets a little brain burning, but that's okay. You know, not all games don't have to be that. I don't like it if all games are like that. No, nope. but sure. uh, it gets a little crunchy. But I like it. <clears throat> I like it a lot, and it's it stayed in my collection. Uh, that 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 alone should should give you uh, a little bit of validity, at least my words validity, why I put it on my list. That's my number four, Alien Frontiers. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I need to play this game. Period. <laughs> um, I just have not. So that's my one regret from 2010. Dun dun dun. <laughs> All right, my number four is a little solo card game um, with a funny little theme. I don't even know exactly what the theme is. You're, I think you're captured in like the void or something like that. But it's called Oniram. Oh, um, in Oniram, you're playing oh, yeah. down cards. You're trying to get either a door to pop up while you have the key of that color, or you're trying to get three different symbols of the same color together um, so that you can pull the door out of the deck. You're just basically trying to collect these eight doors, but there's these nightmares that come out and cause all kinds of problems for you, make you discard cards and things like that. Mm. And the deck is your timer, so as you lose cards, you may really need um, to win the game. You're literally and, losing time. Yeah, and the saddest part is when a door comes out <coughs> and you don't have the key, you have to put the door to the side, and at the end of that <laughs> round, you got to shuffle it back in the deck again. Oh, so um, it's very painful when you have to do that. Yeah. But it's just a fun little card game. Uh, it just takes you a few minutes to do play. Do you own this? Huh? No, I play the app now. I do have the app. Oh, there's an app. Okay. Um, but I've played the app a whole bunch of times. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a great game. Z it's loves super fun. this game. Yep. Z loves this game. He was a champion for it for such a long time back when I was with the Dice Tower. And uh, I just never I never played it Yeah, because it, it was a solo game. So yeah. he always had his copy, and I, I never had a copy, and, and I, I never asked to borrow it from him. But he spoke very highly of it. So yeah. that, that's uh, nothing new, nothing new. I've, I've heard people talk very highly yeah. about this. Right on. So good one, good pick. All right, my number three is, I believe, our first crossover. Hmm. Our first crossover, my number three, is the game that uh, JT talked about on the bottom five. The Dice Tower. Yep. Defenders of the Realm. Oh, nice. Defenders of the Realm. This is a great game. I put this on our uh, top ten dragon games as well. Oh, you it did. It does have a dragon dragon in it. Yep. You did. Yeah, huh. I did. I didn't remember that. Yep. Yeah, you did. I did. I put it. Mm. I put it on my our our top ten dragon games, and <laughs> somebody was actually asking the other day. I can't remember what what uh, video it was on, but it was uh, one of the videos I did last week, and they were asking if uh, Dra Defenders of the Realm is uh, if 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 I enjoyed it, and if it was if it was one of my favorite games from 2010. Oh, that's funny. And I was just like, and it was before we had made the list. You're but I had eating the witness. But I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't remember if we had recorded it yet or not. But I was like, oh well, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, is that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, it's a, it, it is a great game for everything that he talked about. How it has that very fantasy pandemic feel to it, um, and it was. Richard Lonich is such a great designer. Really enjoyed his work. What else has he made? Um, he's also made um, Run, Fight, or Die, which is one of my favorite zombie games. Um, those are the ones that I immediately think of Richard Lonich as well. Okay. Defenders of the Realm, very good game. My number three. Nice. That was our first crossover? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I'll come <laughs> up with our second crossover. And uh, this huh. one was made by Matt Leacock and Game Right called... Forbidden Island. Oh, okay. Um, Forbidden yeah. Island really is a fun yeah. game. Um, it has a weird theme compared to the other ones because in Forbidden Island, the island is sinking, which is totally cool. You have these really very asymmetric um, player powers that 
really um, affect what's going on and, right. and what you can do, which is really cool. Um, I like the water um, level mechanism in there and in all of those games where as the game goes on, the water level rises and rises and rises, so more things are flipping and it's getting tighter and tighter. And, right. But the funny thing about Isn't this like one... is sand in, in the Forbidden Desert? Yeah. It's not water, it's, it's sand. It's sand. Yeah. But the funny thing about this one is the theme is you have to go find four treasures and get back to the helicopter and leave. So you're just a bunch of treasure hunters out there pushing your luck to steal treasures <laughs> and get off. Well, technically, you could just walk to the helicopter and fly away and say you don't need that kind of stuff. Right. But you got to be Indiana Jones, so you got to stay there. <laughs> and the second one, you're rebuilding the helicopter or jet or whatever you yeah, take yeah, off on yeah. because it landed in the desert. Right. Um, and the third one, you're doing other things. But this is the one where technically, if you weren't so greedy, you could just get on the helicopter and leave before the... Island sink. That's what I'm saying. But there's the fun in that. <laughs> this is a very fun game. Um, it's just one of those. It's just a really good. Um, everybody enjoys it when you put it out there. It's got those cool little uh, plastic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, tokens or not tokens, but the you know, like little chalices Statues, and stuff like yeah. that that you get to get. So uh, it looks good on the table, and it's good for you know introductory game for just about anybody. So right. That's yep. good. That's good. That's a good pick. Yep. That's one of the things that I liked so much about the game was the component value of it. Yep. It just uh, all all of them really. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Forbidden Jungle. I haven't haven't uh, done that one yet. But all of them have that very high component quality, which is I like more, more like a toy factor, I guess. It had a really uh, a real toy feel to it, but mm -hmm. it had a really kind of meaty game that was yep. what was there yep, as well. Yep. So my number three, Forbidden <clears throat> Island. Good. Good. Probably not going to be on JT's list, um, but this one is the 100th Civil War <laughs> Anniversary Edition of Battlecry. Mm. And we didn't go far back enough for me to include Battlecry on any lists, mm. so I'm, I'm calling in an audible Perfect. for this one, because I actually own the uh, Hasbro version of Battlecry. I don't have the hundred. Uh, I've seen it at conventions, and I'm huh. like, oh. you just line up a bunch of guys on one side, and line up a bunch of and guys on the other shoot. side, and just put them together and shoot. And no, go. that's not what you do. <laughs> that's not what you do. It's a command and color system as part of that whole uh, family of games: yeah. Memoir 44, Great War, Battle Cry, uh, Command and Colors. Um, and uh, this one is specifically for the American Civil War, and uh, it did have a card. My version has a card in it, which was unheard of there's only one card in it so only one person's going to get it every game and it's basically activate everything oh yeah yeah nice. and people hate that card and i definitely understand why because i've had it played against me many times yeah and it's like weird, what am i supposed to do how am i supposed to thing, win man but it's just one of those things but battle cry is, is built on a great system the command of color system is is uh just very enjoyable nice. and uh it it handles it handles the, the, the weight of a simulation mm -hmm. without carrying the weight yeah. of a simulation. In other words, you don't have to worry about logistics. You don't have to worry about gotcha. this and that. And it's, it's still a simulation, but it, it's, it's very light, very family-friendly. We, family, we, family we need to take this game, give it to Uwe Rosenberg for a while, and let him uh, so you have to feed your troops. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> That's called advanced squad leader. No, I, I don't. I don't think you have to do that. But there are many, 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 many more super heavy war games that are out there. We don't need more of them. All right, fair uh, enough. That's my number two. Battle Cry, specifically the 150th Civil War Anniversary Edition. My number two was a pretty, pretty easy um, lock in this position for the, um, for the types of games I like. I love deck builders, mm. and this is Ascension, the deck building game. Oh, okay. Um, Ascension came out, and you know, after yep. all the Dominion and everything else, but it was the one that came out with. It's what got was, that really cool art. What was the gimmick for this one? Ascension. Ascension. I knew, I've, I, I, I know I've played it, but I feel mm. like there was something that made it different than Dominion somehow. I'm trying to remember if. Base Dominion had so because Ascension had the constructs, which were like the uh, like the bases mm -hmm. in Star Realms. Okay. And so it added those constructs, those bases that were on the 
board um, round to round to round to mm. round. And I'm not sure that the original games had, you know, like Dominion had that right off the bat. It might have. I can't remember. But it has those constructs out there. That, like I said, they're like a StarCraft or a Star um, Realms base. Yeah. Um, and then you had Heroes um, that did different things. And, and, it, and it really started to synergize. You know, if you have two heroes, you're going to do this and everything else. But it's just yeah. a card drafting. You know, you're trying to take out the other person's health before they take out your health. Mm. Um, and it's in that. But I really like the graphics, the design uh, of this game when it came out. Because it wasn't so plain and boring looking. It was cool and kind of edgy. Um, edgy. Edgy. Oh, there was a game. I don't think it was Ascension. But there was a game that some of the, some of the artwork looked like it was drawn on a piece of notebook paper. That's probably like Dominion. a high schooler. No, it wasn't. No, Dominion. I'm trying to think. It, it it probably wasn't. Maybe it was like I don't know. But the, I remember there you was. You might like, be able to see that about Ascension with some of the cards. Really? Um, but it's a yeah. I mean, it's a style, right? Sure. Um, but exactly. But uh, yeah, I I really liked it. And um, this is another game I got rid of not too long ago, actually. Well, it may not have made it up here with us. Um, from when we moved to Wenatchee, but hmm. yep. Okay, cool. Well, that still, was number two. A good right? deck builder. Number two. Number two. Ascension. All right, my number one is our third crossover. Uh, unless he's got oh. another crossover over there. Nope. Uh, that would be our fourth. But this is our third crossover, and it is Seven Wonders, the card game, <laughs> the drafting game. Um, I've, I've used this game in so many different ways between gamers, uh, non-gamers, um, uh, students in my classroom on like mm -hmm. those free days in high sure. school, uh, when they wanted to play some, you know, morose card game, like, I don't know, I don't even know what they were called, but it's just like the same thing over and over and over and over and over, and I'm like, guys, let's, I want to play spades. No, we're going to play, play Seven Wonders. Uh, yeah, let's play a card game. <laughs> let's play a real <laughs> card game. And, you know, a lot of people used to give me a lot of guff with this being an introductory game because they thought it was just too difficult, but really the most difficult part of the game is scoring at the end. Yeah, it's not a difficult game, although... New players, and I think we talked about this in the last video on the Dice Tower video, was um, new players can get... It's easy to lose pieces of this, like sure. not understand military right. or right. not understand technology. Yeah, you're not going like to do that. well. You, no. You won't necessarily do well, but you'll understand how the game yeah. plays. So if it's an introductory game that they're going to play more than once and sure. multiple times, then yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. But that's why if I'm doing an introductory game... And then I said it in the last video, architects I would prefer stuff. Architects. Yep. I know it's lighter, I know it's easier, um, but it's definitely more of an introductory game I that try fits it. the bill better. I um, want to try Architects yep. because I really do enjoy Seven Wonders. Yeah. That's my number one from yep. 2010. Well, nice. That's a great pick. Um, as much as I hate to say it, no, it's a great <laughs> pick. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, well, my number one, and, and in this state, in the 2010 state, um, it's not at its greatest, but it's still a great game. It was oh, a great I game when it, it came I out. I know what it is. I know what it is. Um, and it's even better now. Um, and that is 51st, 51st State. 51st State. That's yes. right. From Portal Games and then Nazi Trevichek, um, 51st State is a fantastic game. It's yeah. just a little engine builder. You're building your, your little civilization, your 51st State. Everybody else is doing the same. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really tight economic, you know, you're really working to get the gas and the guns and the you know the diplomacy tokens and everything else to, wow. to create your civilization but um, and then you can go ahead and, and get combat tokens and you can actually attack other people's places it's one of my favorite things in it is because when I attack Sam's place and destroy something I get a couple of resources that are on the card yeah. but you get to flip the card over and then on your turn, you now have an easy build spot for something way better. Got it. So um, so it doesn't completely, I mean, it might hurt. I mean, oh, you took out my people production, right? Mm -hmm. I need those people. But now you have something you can build on much easier. Could be better. Um, that could be better. Yep. So uh, it's not a complete loss. And it, right. and it changes, and it has good interaction that way because it, what everybody else does does matter to you. You have that big, so, that big. I do. I have the collector set and everything now. Set, yeah. um, 
and it's fantastic. And it's not even that big, which is nice. So that's cool. Um, but, All right. What's uh you got any more games that you uh that didn't make your list? No, not that I wrote down. Like I said in the last video, I really Alien Frontiers. Um I'm sad that I haven't played that because it would probably it would definitely be in this list, I'm pretty sure. Right. Um and then Dominant Species. Yep. Uh, is another one that I haven't played from that year that I'd like to play. Yeah. I didn't I didn't uh really ever enjoy Dominant Species. I enjoyed Dinosaur Island a lot better. I don't know that it's a game that I would keep around or whatever, but I'd right. like to play You'd it like and to have try the it experience. Out, yeah. Uh ones that could have made it on my list. Mm -hmm. And uh these are the ones I shared five other games yep. at the end of the bottom five that Probably weren't going to make my list, but I remember playing them. I remember enjoying them, yeah. but I they probably weren't going to make the top Spoiler for 10. those five. Before you go watch them, war, <laughs> war, 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 war. But no. no four not. wars and one other one. But no, I don't even that's know. Absolute, <laughs> that's actually true. Good memory there. Good job. All right. This one, um, 51st State was... was Probably my number eleven. Mm -hmm. Probably like my number eleven. Game so it's a really much. good game. I really enjoy it as well. I just never really got into it. Z loved the game. Uh, I remember playing it a couple of times with him and enjoying it. But mm -hmm. it's just not one that I ever really latched onto. Uh, one called Mousquetaire du Roi. Mousquetaire du Roi. It's the Three Musketeers. Uh, and it was a. Does that have an English rule book? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it does. <laughs> just, yeah, it's it's. If I gotta learn another language just to read the rule book. <laughs> I don't know. I really enjoyed it though. I, I really enjoy the the Three Musketeer theme, um, but <clears throat> another one was called uh, Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game. Mm -hmm. That was a really fun game as well. Uh, Fresco, uh, a game that's uh, about uh, painting frescoes, and you have to oh. acquire the right colors and all of this other kind of stuff, and. Super Euro game. I think it's put out by Queen Games, but Super Euro game. But uh, it had a great theme and it had a very nice uh, table presence. Uh, Sid Meier's Civilization, the board game. God, I wish I, that's another one I'd be Man. interested to play. Or um, yeah, I don't know. Boy, that was that's a long game, dude. That is a super long. People people give Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition a hard time. Is that longer? Yeah. Or as long? This Holy is just cow. as long or longer than Twilight Imperium 4. I'll stick to my computer games. I've played <laughs> most of those on the computer, and they've taken me hundreds of hours, but I'd rather do that. And then another one was called Isla Dorada. Isla Dorada. And that was, um, I remember it having just a really cool first player token on it. <laughs> That's all I rem really remember. Games going in for the first player token. N no, it did not make my <laughs> list because that's one of the main <laughs> things I remember about it. But I do remember <laughs> enjoying the game, and I thought it, it was a beautiful production. It had a, a very nice artwork, very nice table presence. I just couldn't remember that much about the game. Huh. So that's why I just didn't, didn't even conclude it. But mm -hmm. uh, that's it. So we've given you 10, well... Uh, we had three crossovers. Yep. So we gave you 17 games that are definitely recommended. Yep. And then we've also given you about uh, 15 other games that you should go check out. Sure. Um, with those uh, honorable mentions. So thank you for joining us. We're going to get on out of here. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. See you later.